Um, uh, welcome everybody. This is um, the second half of the day, um, focused on the work of Professor Alan Schoenfeld. Um, thank you for those of you who are here this morning for the workshop and as the club for this afternoon. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to introduce Professor Schoenfeld uh, to talk this afternoon. He's the Elizabeth and Edward Connor Professor of Education and Affiliated Professor of Mathematics at the University of California, Berkeley. He is a Fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science and the American Education Research Association, AERA, <coughs> as well as a Laureate of the Education Honor Society, Kappa Delta Pi. He has served as President of AERA and Vice President of the National Academy of Education. In 2011, he was awarded the International Commission on Mathematics Instruction Klein Medal for the highest international distinction in mathematics education. In 2013, he has awarded ARA's Distinguished Contributions to Research in Education Award, AERA's <coughs> highest honor. Alan has written, edited, or co-edited more than 200 pieces on thinking and learning, including 22 books. He must be about 500 years old. I feel it. His most recent book, How We Think, provides detailed models of human decision making in complex situations such as teaching. His, his interests include mathematical problem solving, assessment, equity, decision making, mathematics teaching, and professional development. Alan was one of the authors of NCTM's Principles and Standards for School Mathematics and he was lead author of the assessment specs for the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium, which assesses the common core. His current research explores the dimensions of effective teaching, and he is working with a number of school districts to prepare for the common core state standards. As I mentioned this morning, if it wasn't for uh, Professor Schoenfeld's work, I would not have ended up being in math ed, and probably would not be standing up in front of you today, so it's also a personal honor for you to be here, Alan. Thank you very much. And he's going to uh, prefer to talk and then accept questions and answers after his talk. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Stephen. It really is a pleasure to be here. I was thinking, as uh, you mentioned, the folks who already went through this morning and still showed up, but we now have an operational definition of masochism. <laughs> Let me, um, let me tell you what I'm going to do uh, for the next hour or so. As folks this morning heard, I'm a math guy. Uh, my PhD is in mathematics. I love the discipline. Uh, I got into education because I want to find opportunities for, well, find ways to help build the system so that all students can enjoy the pleasures and power of The latest thing to hit the landscape is the Common Core Standards, and they do offer a variety of challenges for us. So what I want to talk about, and I'll say in a minute, because I looked ahead my slides, it's either this evening, this afternoon, or this morning, the end of your final zone. Is uh, what the various issues are in terms of getting a, the most productive reading out of the Common Core standards you can, and what some of the systemic issues are that we face. So, um, <clears throat> I thought somehow that I was talking at four o'clock, which would have blended into <laughs> I realize it's only afternoon, unless you're still on California. What's to come wherever, whenever we are? First, I want to talk about um, what really counts, where the rubber meets the road in classrooms, which is mathematics not as stuff that meets a bunch of written standards, but mathematics is an active sense making. Um, <clears throat> then I want to discuss a variety of tools that uh, we've been building intended to um, help pave the way to enable teachers uh, more effectively to support sense-making in the classroom. Um, 
And then uh, this is the stuff we talked about in some detail this morning, uh, the beginning of some tools to actually enhance teacher communities in uh, reflecting on the kind of stuff that goes on in classrooms. And after that, we will talk about it. So, first question is just where are we with regard to time? Because the Common Core standards are being branded as the new thing, everything is a revolution in education, every administration has to have its thing. It's absolutely new. In fact, the Common Core standards represent the evolution of a move um, towards thinking of making, <coughs> towards thinking of mathematics in the classroom as a sense making. That goes back at least to 1975. So there was a whole body of research in uh, math ed starting in the mid 70s that said, you know, there's not more, there's a lot more to understanding what mathematical thinking is than mastering bodies of facts and procedures. There's a whole lot that goes into mathematical thinking, and by 1989, the field had codified that to the point where <coughs> NCTM, National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, in response to perceptions of national crisis, um, how many of you were old enough to or have read the document The Nation at Risk? Oh, okay. The most important quote there was, if a foreign country had imposed upon us an educational system as mediocre as the one we have, we would consider it an act of war. Okay. NCTM, turns out that for various political reasons, National Science Foundation couldn't do what they did after Sputnik. Math Ed and STEM only get attention after national crisis. A uh, crisis that led to the 83 document was the Japanese economy rising one hour well, the view was it must be the fault of science and math education and the economy is falling apart. That was a nation at risk. It's an interesting thing at a meta level that STEM education only gets attention either during periods of war or other national crisis. We never get credit, we never get credit for the things that go well. Right. We always get things go that way. Um, in any case, <coughs> In 1989, NCTM put out the standards, and they were truly revolutionary in that every curriculum document before them said, here's the math kids need to learn. Here is what they need to know about number, what they need to know about measurement, what they need to know about algebra, what they need to know about geometry, etc. <clears throat> the 89 standards reflecting what the research prior to that point said, there are core aspects of mathematical thinking, habits of mind that need to be developed. And the standards were in grade bands, K4, 5, 8, etc. And at each grade band, they had a list of standards. And the first four standards in each grade band were math is problem solving, math is reasoning, math is connections, communicating with mathematics. The idea being, front and center, we're going to talk about acts of doing mathematics, not simply ingesting facts and procedures. And that evolved into, they called them um, content and processes. Um, <coughs> that was elaborated further in NCTM's 2000 Principles and Standards, and it lies at the core of the Common Core Standards. So I'll get to that. So the key issue is mathematical sense making. And I want to give you some examples of not sense making and sense making to make the point as clear as I can. Here is a word problem. Uh, the long version of the problem, which is how students get it. Alan's building a bookcase. There's a little corner that will hold shelves that are two feet wide. He's got two five foot boards. He's going to cut them up to make those two foot shelves. How many two foot shelves can he get out of those um, two five foot boards? 
this is an opportunity for you to talk. Let's get it. Take advantage of it. How many bullets? That's the equivalent of that. I'll accept that. Okay. Uh, study originally in Sweden, replicated with thousands of students in Germany, France, the United States. 70% of the total students asked this question. They said the number of words you get is uh, five. Yeah. Because five and five is ten divided by two is five. We all know that word problems are bullshit cover stories. They have nothing to do with the real world. That's what I learned in school. If you think that's extreme, this is one of my favorite problems came originally from Stella Baruch. Kurt Royster asked 97 first and second graders. There are 26 sheep and 10 goats on the show. How old is it? <laughs> now the frightening thing, 76 of the students, of the 97 students, and I can tell you what their reasoning was. Well, let's see. 26 and 10, that's 36. Yeah, captain can be 36. 26 minus 10, that's too young. 26 times 10. Oh, he'd be bad. <laughs> and, heck, I'm only in first and second grade. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so the kids by second grade had already learned that the game you play in math is they give you some numbers and you use the operation 